Hi YouTube, welcome back to my channel. I thought I'd take the opportunity of revisiting the Chanel Fall collection, which may seem a strange thing to do when the holiday collection is already out in parts of the world and we'll get it here in the UK uh, early next month. But on the other hand, I often show these products and I did in, on this occasion it's almost straight after I buy them and it's very much a first impressions and particularly because this was a collection that I bought quite a lot from. I had kind of mixed feelings when I first saw it but I've actually really come to appreciate a few of the products and be less keen on others. I thought it would be quite useful just to say what my more considered impressions were, particularly as quite a few of these products are still available either online or in the shop. Some of them are not or some of them are harder to find, but most of them are still out there. And most of them, I think, are equally appropriate to the more winter than fall season, you know, especially when we get these collections released so far ahead of the actual season we're supposed to wear them in, as if it really matters when we wear them. But, you know, I bought quite a few of these items back in July and, you know, waited till relatively recently to wear them. So that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. Let's jump right in with the product that I have got the most use from and would, I guess, most recommend, although these things are obviously really personal. And that's the blush, which I bought back in July. It's called Innocence. I bought it in the States, so it's the States formula. Um, that's the non-baked formula. And I have worn it pretty consistently on and off since I bought it back in the summer when it was perfectly appropriate. And I've been wearing it a lot this autumn and really enjoying it. It's a very cool toned, mauvey pink. And you can see it's not the most obvious of shades. It's not going to be suitable for women with um, more olive or dark skinned complexions. But for um, fair British skins, it's a really, really pretty cool toned flush, which I found exceptionally useful either when I want to do just a very natural look on holiday in the summer, but also when I want to wear stronger colours, particularly plums and um, dark browns in fall. It's a really nice consistency, although that may be down to the uh, American formula. It's not too shimmery, but it is beautiful and soft and subtle. So I've really enjoyed that. It is possible still to find it um, on various Chanel stands. And so if you're in the market for a not too distinctive but extremely useful blush, uh, I would highly recommend it. And I've got a lot of use from it and I'm still continuing to use it. And I think I'll continue to use it throughout the winter season. Um, it's not my absolute favourite in this kind of colour range. Uh, I did, um, my favourite blush is Plum Attraction, which is part of the permanent collection, is not dissimilar in tone, but is deeper and so would be more suitable for darker complexions as well. But a, another really good cool tone Chanel blush. But this is really versatile because you can wear it in the summer, whereas Plum Attraction, not so much. It's to me a very winter colour. So highly, highly recommend. The nail polishes um, were a bit of a disappointment to me when I first saw them. I thought, you know, these two really kind of a bit mm, and a bit similar. And the more vampy colour, which I tend to go for, this blue-toned grey, um, very nice, and I knew I would buy it straight away, but not one that probably I would wear a great deal. 
and that's um, certainly how it's panned out. This is not the best Chanel formulation. It really needs two good coats, um, which is unusual for Chanel. They're, they're often good to go actually in one, although I always use two, whereas this you could almost use three coats to get away the streaks. It, you know, it just is a bit streaky. If I show you the wheel that I use, that was one coat where you can see the coverage is, is not brilliant. Um, it's a perfectly fall appropriate colour, but perhaps just a little too dreary for me. Then I held off buying the nude, which is a mid, um, mid shade nude, um, slightly pink undertones, but will suit a lot of skins. Nudes can be difficult because according to your skin tone, some of them can make you look as if you've got really red hands. Um, some of them, you know, just not very flattering. You've really got to play about. This is a nice one. I was wearing it in my last two videos, I think. Barely noticeable on my nails, even with three coats, but just makes your nail look clean and chic and polished. Um, plenty of dupes out there. So, you know, if you're not a huge Chanel fan, you really don't need this one. Um, I'm a collector, so I get them all. This one I was quite near about as well when it came out. This is Atmosphere, which is limited edition, but you can still get it. And if you are a Chanel fan, I do recommend this one. I've actually got more use out of it than I expected. It's got this beautiful um, multi-dimensional pearlescent shimmer. It's not that impressive just on its own. I mean, you can barely see it there on the wheel. It's this one. But what I really like about it is the effect it has as a top coat. Um, here you see it over the top of Orage. And it completely changes and gives far more dimension, almost giving a kind of bronzy cast to Orage. And uh, it does that with all sorts of different colours. So that's the one that I've actually ended up getting a backup of because it's a really useful um, top coat. It works quite well um, either as a top coat or on its own, one of the better formulations. So that ended up being for me the standout of the nail polishes of the autumn. And in fact, I have to say, I even slightly prefer it to Sweet Star, um, the uh, fashion night out release that was so popular and so hard to get hold of. So that's still one I kind of recommend you checking out. I um, like the Rouge Coco Shines of Chanel's lip formulations. I only bought one from this collection and it was this rather alarming looking plum. This is called Aura. Um, I bought this again as part of my initial haul in the States. It's far, far gentler when you apply it. Very nice moisturising formulation, um, quite a glossy look, very autumn winter appropriate and I have worn it quite a lot. As I say I really like these formulations because they kind of give the um, shine without gloopiness that the glossomers to me do. I'm not a great lip gloss fan. There were two lip glosses as part of this collection, one of which was a kind of pretty, almost matching the atmosphere um, type formulation. Very, very pretty in the um, tube. I didn't buy it in the end because I don't wear gloss a lot, but if you do wear glosses, I think that was a really nice one. The other one, which was more this colour, um, I thought was fairly gross, to be honest, and you can still get both of them, I've noticed. Um, there were two other more neutral cocoa shines and a bright pink called Diva, which I was quite tempted by. I have um, Diva in the um, Rouge Allure formulation, uh, which is quite kind of shocking and in your face. I don't wear it a lot, but I do enjoy it when I do. This is more a kind of spring colour to me. Um, but I think all of these are available and worth checking out um, if you like that formulation. The eyeshadows, uh, first of all, they didn't release an Illusion Dombe. There was, I think, one um, quad, which was very nice, nice formulation, 
kind of um, taupey brown mixture. I just didn't feel it was different enough from the ones I had and certainly not when I was going to splash out on Tom Ford. And then they brought out um, probably five or six of these individual ones. Now, I ended up getting two. I should say, I think these are a bit of an acquired taste. They retail at about £23, £22-£23 in the UK, which is very expensive for a single shadow. Uh, I bought one last year called Gris Gris, which is the most fantastic versatile shade that I use all the time um, because I do think having a single shadow is um, really useful when you're just doing a simple quick eye makeup in the week and you perhaps want to tuck it in your handbag to touch up later on. I almost never buy these full price. It's possible to get them at considerable um, reductions on eBay and I'm pretty sure they're not fakes. You know, they're the real thing that are being bought up by middlemen as uh, l less profitable um, Chanel makeup items and you can pick them up usually for about £10. That's what I do. I think I got these two for 16 Um, I wouldn't have bought them otherwise, but um, they were good value. Now, this one is Pulsion, a very um, dark, again, plum in the um, palette. And you can see very intense pigmentation, quite matte, um, applies a bit more grey, easy to smoke out. And uh, I have worn it a few times and I do enjoy it. What I like to do is layer it over one of the Illusion Dom from earlier this year called Dia Passant, which is one of my favourite Illusion Dom. But it's still available if you chase it around. Boots have got it, for example. And if you like the Illusion Dom and you missed out, I highly recommend this one. It is the most beautiful, multifaceted, gentle plum that you can shear out so you know it's barely there at all or really build it up it's great on its own it's great with other shadows layered over it um i think it's far more appropriate to this season than it was to spring when it was released so although it's not part of this collection i do highly recommend hunting it out if you like the illusion dong formulations and then the other one that I bought um, was this very alarming pink, um, which I've tried to wear. This one was called Exaltation. Uh, I have to say, I think it's a, a tough gig to pull off, um, although a lot of ranges showed this pink um, as part of their um, full collection. You know, maybe just a little highlight in the centre of the eye, but, you know, I'm not sure I'd recommend getting it. There was quite an interesting yellow gold as part of this range and a few slightly more neutral colours. As I say, I, I do really enjoy these formulations, but check them out on eBay. You really can get some much better deals for this particular um, part of the Chanel range. And then the other thing that I liked, uh, which I'm afraid I don't think is available, is the limited edition waterproof uh, volume mascara in the plum colour. I just buy these up in bulk. They're my preferred mascara by far. Um, it's a very gloopy formulation that works well on my eyelashes, which are naturally long and curly. And so my problem is that I tend to get panda eyes where the tips of my eyelashes brush my eye socket um, and that's my real problem and this does not give me panda eyes however I know that the gloopy formulation is far less successful for people who um, struggle more with with getting the curl in their eyes lashes or their eyelashes are shorter because it does weigh down your eyelash a bit which is actually what I want to prevent um, panda eye but um, you may not if your eyelashes are different but I do highly recommend um, the Chanel mascaras and uh, especially their different colours I find um, you know I quite like to experiment with those so um, there are my more considered thoughts on the full collection uh, I hope you've enjoyed this and uh, I'll speak to you soon bye for now